These days I just ask myself why the other equation works. I mean, you know about other equation. I mean, other equation, it's very famous, for example, when you put something like this one plus one is equals to zero. That one is the famous Euler equation. Okay? That Euler is a very smart guy. But why other equation really works? I mean, we have two famous constants. The Euler number, P, and we have the imaginary number, and these all positive things, just plus by one, is equals to zero. It's very interesting. So, first to understand why Euler equation works, we need to understand why something like this, or where it comes from, something like this. So, we need to understand, for example, that this one, for example, from uh, angle theta, this is, comes from cosine theta plus A times sine theta. Okay, and of course, when theta is equal to P, the other equation comes from here. Okay, so just to start to think about that, we need to pay attention for something like this. If you can imagine the complex plane, for example, when you put something like the axis by real numbers, and when you put axis for imaginary numbers, of course, and we need to think about uh, just a point. Yes, just a point in this imaginary complex plane, for example. And if you take a point here, and of course with coordinate from here, it's A, and this coordinate for imaginary is B, for example. We have that. In this case, in the simple case, the complex number Z is just like A plus B times A. Okay? It's very, very simple. But if we can understand a little bit more things about that, for example, if you can imagine a circle just in the first quadrant here of a quarter of circle, just something like that, for example. Sorry, the draw is not perfect, but here you have one, here you have A, okay? And here we can, for example, see that in this case, the radius is just like one, for example, okay? So, when you think about that, and just, we can imagine here, we can see here a triangle when this measure is just like sine, and this one is just like cosine. For example, if this angle is theta, of course, this cosine theta, it is sine theta, okay? And this is the same like B and A. In other words, we can change here, for example, this one by cosine theta, okay? And that one by sine theta, okay, plus a. It's very simple to understand that. That is the complex number z, okay? So, but why this one? What happens that when, when you can link this one with this, for example, with Euler equation? So, we need to remember that, for example, if you imagine the Taylor series of this function, this famous function, a at x is something like this one, okay? The series comes from zero to infinity, and we have x at n divided by n factorial. Very simple. And when we open this series, it's very simple series, we can arrive that in something like, for example, a at x, it's one plus, of course, we have here x and more x at square, so factorial n, Okay, this comes to infinity in this pattern. Now, we can imagine, for example, a at e times x, for example. If we take the, this is the, the same definition, for example, we have this summatory is just changed by a x at n, okay? Divided by n, of course, comes from zero to infinity two. And this one is just something like one more, of course a times x, 2, for example, 1 factorial is not changed, but a times x at 2 by 2 factorial, and this pattern go on. For example, we have 3 factorial, more and more and more. So now, something a little bit funny happens. 
And if we remember that, of course, we have a pattern for these numbers. A is just A, A at 2 is just something like minus 1, A at 3, minus A, for example, and here A at 4 is 1. And so this continues, this is a, there's a loop here, this continues, and we can just change here these numbers. For example, here we have this kind of sum, like 1 plus A times X, to 1 factorial. Here we have A at 4, at 4, no, at 2, sorry, and we have minus 1. And minus 1 we have just here for times x squared by 2 factorial more a at 3 that is minus a and we have minus a x at 3 by 3 factorial just one more term and we have a at 4 this is just 1 and we have x at 4 by 4 factorial and go on okay so if we have attention for this pattern here and and just remember that, for example, the Taylor series of sine x and the Taylor series of cosine x is just time off, for example. Just we put both here, from 0 to infinity, from 0 to infinity, we have alternative term in each one. And we have here in sine x at 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. And here we have x to n divided by 2n factorial okay just looking for these two series these two Taylor series and here it's very funny because we have one term and this one and this one and we can take these terms and we can understand that these terms comes from cosine and of course when we put together these terms, we can arrive in cosine. And when we put together these other terms here and another here, we can arrive in the Taylor series of sine. In other words, we have sine plus cosine. But one of these is just multiplying by a. In other words, we have here a, the constant, other constant at a times x, this something kind of like this, for example. Just using the definition, we have cosine x plus sine x times a, so a sine x. This is very interesting because this one is something like that. Of course, of course we, can, we can change x by theta. And we change x by theta, something like very, very, and the last thing in this presentation is, for example, we may change a theta by p or x by p, it's equal, we have cosine by p, of course, a times sine by p. And this one is something like minus one, and this one is zero. And here we have a at a times p is kind minus one plus zero. In other words, a at p plus one equal to zero. Yeah, that is the famous Euler equation. Okay? Yeah, man. Euler is the very smart guy. <laughs> See you in the next one.